Hi folks, John Dunn, RPG freelancer and publisher of Melior Via. I'm up here at Immortals Inc. And I'm talking about RPGs once more here with Mikey who's working the board. As always, what's up guys? Since I'm here, there's a pretty good chance we'll be talking Cthulhu. This time I thought I'd talk about another core rulebook and that is Trail of Cthulhu. This is an alternative rulebook, different system than the Call of Cthulhu RPG published by Chaosium. This one's published by a different company by the name of Pelgrain Press. This particular book was written primarily by Ken Height, very accomplished RPG writer, done a lot of crazy stuff with alternate history. I'm pretty sure Robin Laws helped him develop the rule system behind this. Did you know my real name's Kenneth? <laughs> is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, that's awesome. It is. I had no idea. Yeah, my nickname is Mikey. Come on. Oh, cool. Let's go by Kenneth now. How about that? Huh? You sound much more professional and sophisticated. One of the things that not everybody likes about Call of Cthulhu is that your characters can be investigating a mystery, trying to solve it, and they're not able to because sometimes they can't find the critical clue that they need. And that can just be because, hey, sometimes dice suck, right? And sure, you can work around that by having the game master say, oh, even though the dice said you didn't find it, you're going to find it because, hey, I don't want to sit here all night. Or you can have the game master who's going to say, no, no, we got to play by the rules. And you end up with six hours of game session where nothing happens because you're just looking around trying to find a different way to solve the puzzle and you can't do it because you're missing important pieces what would you do as the game master in this situation uh in that situation i would say roll those dice again oh no roll them again no really <laughs> one more time we got there places you go to be we got places to be people exactly uh i don't i want people to have a fun time i don't want people to be sitting around frustrated and confused it's cthulhu you're always gonna be a little bit confused when they eat you you're gonna be frustrated but that's that's story frustration not just trying to fight the game system. So the thing Trail of Cthulhu does differently, it always says you're going to find the essential clues you need to solve the mystery. It basically, from the get-go, the rule system is built around solving puzzles, solving mysteries. And so the core rule system behind this is called the gumshoe system. Fairly straightforward, fairly easy system where everything's resolved with just a D6 roll and you can put some extra commitment into it based on your character's abilities and background and expertise, but basically boils down to one die roll when you need to. But for things like clues and the essential puzzles, if a character is in a place and they have the ability to recognize something as a clue they do so you're never left in that situation where the players can't solve the mystery because the characters just had lousy luck i heard cthulhu can eat your mind or take over your mind i don't know i don't know if eats the right word to use but correct me if i'm wrong can you please let me know what cthulhu does i don't know <laughs> so cthulhu and other entities of the cthulhu mythos these broad sweeping group of monsters that H.P. Lovecraft and people who wrote in his tradition kind of expanded upon are horrors that mankind was not meant to know. They're beings that exist in extra dimensional planes in addition to the one that we're in. They're these nigh incomprehensible powers and just being exposed to them costs mental stability it disrupts your brain and leaves you confused and lacking and eat your mind drooling a bit uh and so the game system has a sanity element much like call of cthulhu does that leverages that that's a lot more intense than eating your brain for sure <laughs> yes yeah it's it's more a question of just damaging your psyche and, and maybe even your soul in the process Including these detectives? Oh, absolutely. The investigators, all the player characters are going to be investigators. That's the general term you use for them. They can come from a broad range of different backgrounds. So you can have a dilettante or an artist or a psychotherapist or policeman or an investigator or, you know, any broad number of different archetypes that are coming out of the 1920s and 30s when the game is intended to be set. Like I said, one of the big things in this is that when you're investigating a mystery, you're able to find the clues. So one of the elements about that that I think is really cool is that it allows the game master to run this, these games in a real kind of fly-by-night, seat-of-your-pants way where you can toss out a clue and the players can kind of go to town on it. So a lot of times the story will develop as people find clues and develop them and add more meaning to them 
and that can direct the whole adventure based on what's going on with those clues. There are a lot of other elements to it. There is a magic system in here with some really horrifying elements to it. There are a lot of background information about the Cthulhu mythos and the different entities that are part of it. If you're not familiar with Cthulhu, this is a great primer book for learning more about it because it does delve into the different entities and the different ways authors have looked at it uh, from differing perspectives, whether that be more of a pulp or a just straight horrific way where the characters have no agency or you know action heroes where maybe they do have a little more potential to change things and there's all kinds of different rules tweaks you can use that are really directed in the book for setting that kind of a tone so what would your favorite thing be about this rpg in particular i really i think the gumshoe system is fantastic for the ability to make sure that the player characters succeed when the story absolutely requires it so that the narrative can always move forward And you're always just developing things rather than getting stuck in the situation where nobody knows what the next step is. Pelgrane has done a great job of supporting this game line. They've come out with a number of different books that offer alternative settings. Uh, There's a really cool one called Bookhounds of London, which sets the campaign in London proper. And the player characters are people who run bookshops or look for bookshops for rich people who are building their own libraries and a lot of those books are forbidden ancient tomes with secrets that man was not meant to know inside of them so it provides a completely different framework for cthulhu where you instead of trying to stop these beings you might be the guy that's trying to find the book on summoning the beings because hey somebody just offered you a lot of money does cthulhu have a british accent in that edition well I imagine the people who hear him hear him with a British accent. Yes, that'd be pleasant. (laughs) And much more debonair and sophisticated. (laughs) For sure. All right, well, we do have a fair number of copies of Trail in stock here at Immortals, Inc., along with a number of accessories for it. So stop in line or hit the website. Take a look and see if it looks like something you'd dig. Immortalsinc.com. It's been a pleasure, John, as always. Can't wait until next week. Thanks, Kenneth. Always. (laughs) 